Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Today, let's take a look at this smart alarm clock for kids. Um, it's basically like chat GPT, but for your bed desk. And it's uh, controlled via some buttons. It's uh, uh, It features some AI-like stuff. So you can say like, hello, Timmy. So it's basically like you can ask questions and it will answer like chat GPT. Uh, but for your kids, uh, which is very questionable, I got this from AliExpress for around 20 euros or so. And it's basically like this Nintendo clock clone type of thing. They also have the round version, which really looks like the Nintendo clock. And yeah, let's take a look inside and let's see if we can hack around in it a bit. So yeah, this is what you get. Basically the box, a USB-C charging cable, a small menu and the device itself. Which, yeah, as you can see also has a battery inside. It has a microphone here, a speaker in the back, a few buttons, no touchscreen. This LCD and yeah, an SD card reader and on off switch. And yeah, let's open it up. It's basically general Phillips screw uh, with four screws on the back. Like so. And since I had it open already, I know that it also has two screws here under this rubber pad. And this rubber pad is also holding in the bottom. Um, but you basically need to cut it and normally remove two screws from here to also open it up. But this is just missed now as I already did it and cut the screws away to not damage the foam too much. So yeah, after that you can see there's a lot of cable dangling around and you have to be careful opening it up. And yeah, let's go around, around it that way a bit you can see here you have a button on the top which is really just a single button you have the lcd connection with a yeah, flex cable you have the microphone here which can be removed as well and you have the three cables or one cable with three connections for the top buttons and this is uh, done via a resistor ladder. So depending on which button you press, another resistor value will get measured and the yeah, processor will detect it. Otherwise you have here the speaker, the battery and the main PCB, which we let, uh, yeah, which we will also get out. And it's really like, basic a basic form a basic device i would call it not not a lot of thoughts into stuff but that also doesn't really matter it's like a sing, simple simple device okay so after that uh, we can also get it out of this plastic bracket like so and let's take a closer look at the main PCB, which is the interesting part. And let's get something to point at it. So the main SOC is this XR872ATS. We have here an amplifier for the loudspeaker. We have uh, a bit of power switching. We have an eight megabyte of external SPI flash. Again, a bit of charging circuit for the battery. And on the back side, we have the SD card reader, a few buttons that are not installed. And this, this uh, makes it seem like this PCB is multiple purposely used in other devices. And just on this one, it's yeah not used by this means. Uh, here you also have a bit of power related stuff and that's it. And yeah, you also have the Wi-Fi antenna here. And overall, this yeah 
XR chip is quite impressive. It's a bit of a comparison to the ESP32, somewhat like ESP32 S3s even. And this AT version, you have now have the ATS version, has four megabyte of internal PS RAM. And this ATS version has even eight megabyte of internal PS RAM. So quite a lot of RAM. And with the external flash, also quite a quite some flash yeah, included here. And yeah, luckily there is an SDK for it. And I was able to tinker around with this SDK. It was quite a mess to get it running. I had to spin up an old 1604 Ubuntu system to even be able to compile it correctly because the GCC version they are using is also quite old and all the yeah, stuff is needed for it. And it was doable via a VM installation. And by reverse engineering everything needed and basically like sniffing the pins and checking the pin out itself and using a bit of mix of the SDK and reverse engineering the firmware, we get to the point of yeah flashing Doom, of course, which is needed. And to do it, it's really just as simple as using an USB to UART converter, like this one. And in this case, I'm using a USB-C port extender, I would call it, um, because they made it so that two pins of the USB-C connector are the UART pins of the yeah, chip. And on the default firmware, the chip is not going into bootloader mode really, but if you basically turn it off and then bridge the G and D pin and this specific not solder it, um, resistor, so like a tweeter in this in this position, and then basically turning it on, it will be in the bootloader mode, and then you can simply flash it via USB to UART, and in the SDK is also like the tool for this included. It's in Chinese, but you can use a translator to get around it. And after that, we can yeah run Doom on it, and I will just show it shortly now. So it's really like basically plugging it in, having the UART connection here. I'm opening the Doom port on the PC, starting the flash and basically now turning it off, bridging the pins and turning it on again. And now the upload is started and I can see it running. It takes around three minutes and I will come back to you then. So yeah, the flashing is now at around 60%. And let's talk a bit about the Doom port and how the programming worked. So basically I was able to dump the flash out of the internal um, ROM and also the SPI flash via also this tool. This debug function is quite nice for it. And I reverse engineered a little bit the firmware itself, but it was not really needed because this SDK is quite well supplying in every direction, except for the LCD, which has no part in it. Um, so I rewrote an LCD function, uh, copied a bit together and also took the original firmware to reverse engineer the pin out because sniffing the data was not really simple because here the voltage were just too, too small, the voltage different and yeah, but eventually it worked out. The um, port itself is now fitting into the eight megabyte of external flash, it has the full doom one included and you can find the source code on github i will link it down in the description it's um, removing any over the air function because of its size but you could theoretically just upload it via the usb plug 
And with the Doom port itself, you can also directly upload it without the need of bridging anything. And yeah, the flashing is now done. So basically, you can now turn it off and on again. And Doom is running actually already. But since we have no display connected, it will not show. So yeah, let's basically just unplug it. Let's connect the LCD to it again. Just to have a first glance if everything worked out. And let's connect the battery to it. Oops, sorry. So we have a simple way of powering it up. And yeah, basically after now switching it on, should show doom. And as we can see, this works out. So let's turn it off again and put everything back together and play a few rounds. And last screw, like so. And yeah, looking good. Let's turn off the light to have a bit better view of the display. You can basically now turn it on. It will boot into Doom. And you can press the home button for OK, basically. This is a start button, basically, which will open up the menu. You have to click left and right and up and down. And what is a bit annoying is that you have to click again and again to move further forward. It's just the way the default button handling with this ADC, so with this resistor ladder works. But yeah, let's basically go into the game and try to show it the best as possible. I think this is really still too much light. I will turn off the light. That works better for the camera. So you can basically now turn left and right, go forward, get a bit of boosters, shoot with the middle button, And let's get some enemies. And I know this is really annoying, this clicking sound, but yeah, that's just basically how it is right now. So let's get them down. And yeah, it's really annoying sound wise. Let's try to get the first room completed. Ah, well, okay. But that's basically it. What you notice maybe the sound is missing. It's for once just not really fitting in anymore. And yeah, it would be nice, but uh, it's good enough. And just to have it laying around as a new game because I really don't think this AI stuff is meant for kids. So this is now completing it better. Okay, have a great day.